My name is Miss Acevedo and I'm super excited today because I have another recommendation from Futumata. This one is called Whoosh by Chris Barton, illustrated by Don Tate. And it is a story, a real story, about a person's life named Lonnie Johnson. Did you know anything about Lonnie Johnson before listening to this book? Well, Lonnie, since he was a kid, his mind was always working and he was coming up with all these ideas of things he wanted to create. Lonnie wanted to be an engineer before he knew what an en engineer was. So let's find out a little bit more about him. Every day brought a challenge for young Lonnie Johnson, the challenge of finding space for his stuff. Six Johnson kids were squeezed into their parents' small house in Mobile, Alabama. Lonnie would have loved a workshop of his own, but there was there just wasn't enough room in the small house that they lived in. There was nowhere to keep all of his rockets. He had like rocket kits and he had also bamboo shooters and rubber band guns and an erector set and go-kart engines. He had bolts and screws and other spare parts his dad let him bring in from the shed. He had various other things that he had hauled back from the junkyard. Look at all of the things on that. That's the kitchen, okay? That's the kitchen table. So he has a lot of objects that he's using and thinking about when he's creating. Lonnie loved building and creating. Ideas for innovations just kept on flowing in his mind. He learned how to make rockets from scratch. Kids at school gathered to watch Lonnie launch them, and he learned just how to make rocket fuel. But he learned how to make rocket fuel inside his home in the kitchen. Ooh, what do you think happened? <gasps> when the rocket fuel caught on fire in the kitchen, Lonnie's mom didn't make him stop. She just sent him to work outside so it would be safer. But she encouraged his creativity and his learning. See, she didn't just stop him. Lonnie wanted to spend his life designing things, building things, and getting them to work. He wanted to be an engineer. However, Lonnie took an exam or a test that said he would not make a very good one. How could that be? Is the test wrong? Sometimes tests are really wrong and they don't really determine what you can or cannot do because obviously he should be an engineer. Look at everything he's doing as a child. His dream had been challenged. Did Lonnie give up because he hit that test? Lonnie was discouraged, but he knew that whoever had graded that test had not met Linux. Who's Linux? Inspired by a TV show, Lonnie had built his own robot. He made it out of scrap metal and named it Linux. Compressed air cylinders and valves allowed Linux's body to turn and its arms to move. The switches came from an old broken jukebox. Lonnie used a tape recorder to program Linux. And as a bonus, the reels looked like eyes. Lonnie wanted to enter his creation in a science fair, but he couldn't get the transmitter to work, and without it, Lonnie couldn't send commands to Linux. Science fairs came and went. Lonnie missed one and then another until he got an idea. Now Lonnie may or may not have asked his sister before he borrowed her walkie-talkie, so he took her walkie-talkie. But it fixed the transmission issue. His school's team took freshly finished Linux to a 1968 science fair at the University of Alabama, where only five years earlier, African-American students had not even been allowed to compete or enter into the science fair. Having to compete in a place that still wasn't very welcoming? Hmm. Now that was a challenge with a capital C. Against other schools from all over the state, Lonnie's team won first place. Soon, 
Lonnie left home to go to college at Tuskegee Institute, where he stood out as a self-confident, insightful, and creative thinker. He stood out as a student who asked the right questions, precisely defined problems, and formulated solutions. And he stood out as the guy who built his own booming sound system out of cast off electronics. It even had lights that flashed in sync with the beat. Lonnie sometimes studied right in the middle of his own parties. The extra studying paid off. He became an engineer after graduation and took him beyond Alabama, way beyond. When NASA was sending an orbiter and probe called Galileo to Jupiter, the space agency needed to ensure a constant supply of power to the orbiter's computer memory. The engineer who had to figure out how to do that was Lonnie. His challenge was to come up with a lightweight backup system able to keep essential functions going in case the main power was lost. It wasn't easy, it wasn't obvious, but Lonnie found a solution. Some at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory doubted his idea would work. Lonnie convinced them it would. He was right, as it photographed Jupiter and its moons. Galileo was supported by the power package that Lonnie designed. Much of what we know now about Jupiter could have been at risk in a power failure, if not for Lonnie. Ideas for other problems to solve just kept on flowing. They flowed whether Lonnie was working with hundreds of people at NASA or up late tinkering with his own inventions. And, and finally, in his own workshop, his ideas were always coming. Lonnie knew the world's millions of refrigerators and air conditioners needed a new cooling system, one that didn't use R12, a chemical that was bad for the environment. He had an idea for using water and air pressure instead. To test his idea, he made a pump and a nozzle, connected them to the bathroom faucet, and turned on the faucet, turned on the pump, and then... Whoosh! The stream that blasted across the bathroom was so powerful, it created a curtain-swirling breeze. It also gave Lonnie an idea for yet another invention. This, he thought, would make a great water gun. The f but first, he had to find or make the parts, including a pump small enough for a child to handle. Then he had to glue the parts together into a prototype, an early version with room for improvement. <gasps> Finally, Lonnie tested his strange-looking squirt gun at a picnic. Does it really work? A man asked. Sure, Lonnie said. Want to see? Lonnie worked the pump, which squeezed air into a chamber. Then he pulled the trigger and the air escaped, forcing the water out with a whoosh. For a water battle to be a fair fight, there couldn't just be one of Lonnie's water guns. He needed to help make more. So he went to a toy company after toy company after toy company, and people kept saying, no, 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 no. Were those companies right, or were they not very clever? And then the word no flowed again and again, but finally one company said yes. It planned to make his water gun. Lonnie also had other projects, a water-propelled toy airplane, two kinds of engines, and his cooling system. He found investors to provide the money for turning his ideas into products people could buy. He made a leap of faith, quit his day job, and devoted himself to full-time inventing. But soon, each plan fell apart. Uh-oh. Even the one for the water gun. <gasps> These things sometimes happen, but when they happen one after another to the same person, well, that's some pretty bad luck. Lonnie didn't have a job. He didn't have the money he that, that he had been counting on. He and his family had to move out of their home and into a little apartment. He was angry and scared, but Lonnie had dealt with challenges all his life. He knew a lot about solving problems, and he still believed in his inventions, especially the water gun. Lonnie went looking for another toy company. In 1989, he found a toy maker who was interested in seeing the water gun. If Lonnie ever happened to be in Philadelphia, 
but don't make a special trip, the guy said. Lonnie made a special trip. In his wife's suitcase, he carried a new prototype. He unpacked it. He filled the tank with water, pumped the gun until the air pressure was good and high, and... Whoosh! If you have ever, ever, ever played with a water gun, did you know who invented the first prototypes or the first examples of a water gun? Wow! People said at the meeting, uh-oh, did they like it? Kids everywhere agreed with that. Wow, Lonnie's water gun called the Super Soaker became a smash hit. In no time, there were Super Soakers in backyards and on beaches and in parks and on the playgrounds. Each sale of a Super Soaker put a little money into Lonnie's pocket. So what did Lonnie do? He got a bigger workshop which is where you will find him today because facing challenges, solving problems, and building things are what Lonnie Johnson loves to do. And his ideas just keep on flowing. So if you ever have an idea or a creative mind, know that challenges in our lives will come. People will say no. Does that mean you have to stop believing in yourself and going after what you really think? No, it doesn't mean that. It just means you have to persevere. Like we have heard of so many stories about other amazing people that they have to persevere and push through all the negative no's and all those things and challenges and difficulties that may come in the way. All right. Have a great day. Bye.